Hello, my name is Bart Brecka, and in this third installment of the Echo Swingline Stapler, developed by Beyond Design, Mike Prince and his team in the late 90s, <clears throat> I've got the Pro Engineer model up, and uh, if you'll notice, this is a very talon-like looking feature here, and uh, you'll also notice that, that this geometry is very kind of uh, aggressive. I want to soften that up a little bit and pull it out. But uh, before I do, you'll notice that I don't have my skeleton model in, in, in the, in, in the uh, model tree. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. And I'll uh, default constraint. And uh, because everything's put together via coordinate system, I can reorder it up to the beginning and hide it. don't really need to see it. But that way I can save my model and... Uh, I can save my assembly and feel comfortable that I'm saving all the parts that are significant. There's nothing worse than saving your assembly thinking that the skeleton model will get saved and you forget to save the skeleton, which uh, sets you up to run with a, a day-old skeleton, which can be very problematic. Failure mode. Not impossible to deal with, but uh, certainly no fun. So in this geometry, I'm just going to soften up that edge and you'll notice that uh, I was able to change the, the aggressive angle and make it less ag aggressive in the front. And when I come to my assembly and hit regenerate, the update occurs. So let's go back to my, assembly, my, my skeleton model and uh, make another change. You'll see the, the talon-like geometry. So I've got three, three curves here and three associated geometries that correspond to those three curves and they're in the same order. So if I edit this one and start to, to tug and pull on that, you can see that I've got it dimensioned to the bottom, you know, and uh, it's pretty easy to flip the flip the concavity of the curve and mess it up pretty good. So you got to kind of be careful. You'll also notice that in this geometry, I don't have the outer boundary to sketch to. I'm going to go ahead and try to take care of that first. And in my effort, what I'm going to do is place a bounding box at this level in the model tree, and I'm going to reorder it as soon as I get it to uh, make that just a little bit bigger. Okay, so I could scale that and get it just right. I'm just going to reorder it up here before the bounding, before the box, and I, I call this the bounding box methodology. Talked about that on a number of forums. Right, I'm going to use the alignment tool in Sketcher mode to kind of, uh, you know, lock it in. Now, if you'll notice, I don't have any dimensions in my sketch, as if I would have used this sketch in the beginning. So now I can resume some of these features and you'll, you can see that, I'm going to go to insert before this solid, this failed feature. Because, because of this geometry not going all the way to the end, it's giving me a little bit of a problem. But if I would have had this workflow in the beginning and not trying to dimension everything, in this case I'm going to align to the bounding box. I would have never had the failure in the first place. So this is what I mean when I say managing parent-child constraints in order to make a, the most ridiculously robust model. Cancel. Just right-click on the red arrow and cancel that out. So if I if I try to raise this geometry, um, you'll notice everything raises except for this sketch here. So I'm going to come up to my uh, first sketch here and we'll lock him into uh, into position. Of course I want to make it less talon like so it's a little difficult to manage where and how, how that works. Of course it would have been a lot easier to use a spline in this situation. Advanced users will choose a spline in this situation for this very reason. But in our class we're really trying to learn how to make this work for us so we're uh, on purpose not going to use a spline just to just to learn how to deal with these kind of situations of course there may not be a good solution
pretty difficult and unwieldy. So advanced users will just elect to use a spline right off the bat. I'm going to remove that tangency constraint there. Pull it back just a little bit. And then re-evoke the tangency. Something's aligning. Ah, this was my problem. Completely out of scope of my visual comp, uh, you know, the, the visual vocabulary that Pro Engineer is using here is completely out of scope of what I could see or not see. And uh, that's, that's kind of why I like to dimension things appropriate, you know, appropriately because I can't see it. It doesn't exist. So now I've got a geometry that, that should be relatively flexible and I'm going to dimension it to the top of the bounding box. Very different workflow and uh, I know a lot of people don't like this because they're so stuck on ANSI standards that they can't, you know, ultimately if you know the rules well enough you can break them. I'm going to dimension this one very differently. Left click, left click, middle click. That's how I control my radius there. Alright, so now if I raise the bounding box, my hope is that the geometry is a little bit more flexible. You can see how that works. So I call this exercising the geometry. It's not quite exactly what I want at this level, so I might try to manage that with relations that might work, or parameters, a combination of parameters and relations. Okay, you also, let's, let's layer off the uh, mirrored datum planes. We don't see those. Um, the, bottom, the bottom sketch, let's do something kind of unique to it as well. I'm going to left click, right hold down, edit definition on that sketch. And you'll notice that uh, in, in a previous video, I dimensioned it so that I could drive it up and down with one dimension. See that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and lock these dimensions. And now I'm going to drag it up and down. Very different. Can't do that in SolidWorks, of course, but uh, you know, one day they might get around to add, uh, giving me a multitude of colors, different types of dimensions. Let's delete that. Okay, so now what I've done is I've eliminated some of the dimensions, and now less dimensions makes it even easier for me to communicate or to manage the, these modifications. So we've got three different colors of dimensions in Pro Engineer. We've got uh, gray for a soft dimension, yellow for a hard dimension, and orange for a locked dimension. Really, really, really hate not having that in other prep packages because I, I really get the hang of using that as a workflow. I'm going to come in here now and uh, adjust this top sketch to make sure that it doesn't violate the other sketch. And I need to probably raise this just a little bit to 0.8 and I might want to soften this up. So my goal is to make a significant number of changes to a model and see I've got it all as one part which means I'm designing in the assembly but I'm doing it through a part. I can drag that down just a little bit. So I'm, I'm it's in a sense designing something in an assembly. Let's go now and regenerate the assembly now that I've made some changes to it. And uh, something else failed so let's go down and look at uh, those parts to see okay I'm, I'm just going to cancel out of this and let's just open up these parts to see which one's failing okay so this this sketch didn't go all the way to the bounding box so let's go and and and, and manage that now we have to do that here in the skeleton part as we as we come down and look at the final sketch edit definition and uh, if I would have had that bounding box in the beginning, it would have been a very different, robust model. Okay, so let's check out of that, update that, that part that's failing, regenerate that, it's not failing anymore, control C. All right, now let's, uh, let's add radiuses to this geometry. I'm going to add a radius to the top. Point two. I like to put my radiuses radiuses in as multiple features because if it does fail, 
I can come back later and kind of manage those failures better. Especially if it's somebody else's part that's failing. Let's update the assembly and see how it looks. Control G. So these radiuses went through each of the parts. Okay, in a later video, I may uh, add uh, ribs to the geometry, and I think even the advanced users will learn something in that exercise. Thanks for watching. Consider using Design Engine for training in the future.